Joshua Voorhees is a passionate self-taught pianist from Owasso, Michigan, whose musical journey began at his mother's side at the age of four and evolved into a remarkable story of resilience and triumph. As an out and proud member of the LGBTQIA community, Joshua has faced significant challenges, including battling epilepsy, yet continues to reach for the stars with undiminished determination. His story is one of overcoming adversity, rediscovering his love for music, and embracing his true self. Thank you so much, Joshua Voorhees, for joining me here and where now to share this space and share your story. Thank you. Of course, you're welcome. I love being here. Well, love having you here. So let's um, have a few notes here to guide our conversation. Mm -hmm. Joshua, your story about learning classical music from your mom. Yes. And then, and then teaching yourself by ear mm -hmm. is, let's just call it inspiring. Let's call it what it is. Can you share a bit more about those early days? What was it like for little Joshua sitting <laughs> by the piano, figuring out melodies from the radio? So, um, so yeah, my, my mom, she taught me mainly classical music at the age of four. Um, when I first started, when she would play the piano, um, and this is just based off what she told me, I was glued to her side every time she played. And as an experiment, she taught me how to play the piano. And she didn't really know how to read sheet music, she just taught me by visual. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was five, she didn't have anything else to teach me. And I had four younger siblings at the time, and she couldn't afford piano lessons for me, so she's like, sorry bud you're kind of on your own with uh, learning how to play so i and youtube wasn't a thing back then the internet wasn't really a thing so i um she let me listen to her cassette tape player and i was just so um i remember wanting to just learn more because music had just been this huge thing that i just could not stop learning enough Mm -hmm. um, so I would listen to the cassette tape player with all kinds of genres, not just classical, because uh, I was definitely raised with the 70s and 80s classic uh -huh. rock. Um, and I would just learn all these different types of genres. And I would um, like I would nitpick like different parts of music. Like mm -hmm. if there's a specific chord that I wanted to listen or that I heard, and I'm like, I have got to learn this. Um, or if I wanted to learn the entire song through, I would listen to it a couple of times, then I would go over to the piano and just what my family calls fingering it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite a talent that you've developed over all these years. Um, you know, so let's get a little bit deeper here mm -hmm. in talking. You had mentioned that you lost some of your memory mm -hmm. due to epilepsy which must have been incredibly challenging, I can only imagine. Um, can you tell us about the moment that you sat down at the piano during the pandemic <laughs> and found that stream of consciousness, found the ability to play once again? What do you think triggered such a powerful connection, reconnection, I must say? So that that's a really good question. So, um, of course, with when the pandemic had first started, you know, um, especially with specific states, including Michigan, we were forced to shut down everything um, because COVID was a, a very scary um, uh, virus for a lot of us, um, especially the immunocompromised uh, mm -hmm. patient. Well. Of course, working in the medical field, I say patients, <laughs> um, but you know, for a lot of people, I'm sure it was definitely scary. Um, but I noticed myself um, mentally getting drained just very easily. Mm. Um, I didn't really see a bright future for myself at the time. Let's see, this was back in early 2020, so I'd say March of 2020. Um, I noticed myself getting into a very deep depression. Um, and before I had um, 
kind of lost the ability to play the piano due to my epilepsy and just all the seizures I had had. Um, music was my go-to mm -hmm. for therapy. Yeah. Like if I was upset about something, I would go over to my keyboard or my piano and just play. Mm -hmm. And that just universally, you know, it helped me calm down. Mm -hmm. um, but that specific day, I had this like strong feeling that I wanted to start playing again. Um, I didn't remember much, but I just needed to do something. And I felt like the strong urge that I needed to start playing again. So I went over to the piano and I tried starting to play music that I had known for years. And it just, the muscle memory just wasn't there. And by this point, my seizures were a lot better than they had used, they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I just sat there and just tried to play and play and play. And I got so frustrated and I just sat there and yelled at the piano and I said, what else can I do? And then it was like the next, that next moment, it was like this stream of consciousness that just flowed through me. And I still to this day can't describe it, but it was like all of these notes and melodies just popped in my head and my hands just started doing their own thing. And I started doing things on the piano that I couldn't even do before. And ever since then, I have been, it was like music was just reignited in me and my passion for music was multiplied by tenfold rather than from when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And I, from then on, I became more and more interested with doing live streams on online, like on Facebook, TikTok, um, Instagram, and posting more videos of myself. And I've just been expanding my musical abilities more and more. And um, I just came to the realization that it is time for me to perform and to start doing solo shows and getting myself out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just suddenly reignited. And from yeah. there, it just, it hasn't faded since then, huh? No. Wow. Um, you know, so let's switch gears a bit mm -hmm. because beyond a musician, you're, you're a son, you're a friend, <laughs> you're like, there's so many things to so many people. Um, let's talk about coming out. Mm -hmm. Coming out in a conservative Christian environment, it can be tough, mm -hmm. to say the very least, I must say. Um, and your journey is a testament to resilience. What advice would you give to others in a similar situation who are struggling to reconcile their identity with their upbringing? What was that like for you? It was definitely not easy. Um, you know, from the age of 14, I started having those feelings. Um, and of course, being raised in a very strict conservative Christian background, we as kids were instilled in our minds that it is very wrong mm -hmm. to be part of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, but I, you know, for about five or six years, I just kept pushing those feelings away. Mm -hmm. I prayed and begged God to take those feelings away because the way I was raised, it was morally wrong and that I would go to hell for feeling that way. But I had a suicide attempt back in 2021. And one of the reasons is I wasn't truly fully in love with myself. I didn't fully accept myself, all the beautiful and even ugly aspects of myself. And I made being gay one of the ugly aspects. But my biggest piece of advice for people who are struggling with, you know, this specific subject is don't put yourself through what I put myself through. Um, you know, it's definitely not easy, especially with being raised in a background like that. Mm -hmm. But you, 
the biggest thing I had to realize is, you know, the God that I truly believe in mm -hmm. loves all of his children that he created. Mm -hmm. He does not hate everyone. And, you know, I am not here to change anyone's beliefs or how they hurt their hearts feel. Um, but my biggest piece of advice is to really do some deep soul searching um, and realize that this is something that God will not change. There is no amount of conversion therapy or even just regular therapy that's going to change your heart mm -hmm. of how you truly feel. And, you know, I had this big reality, uh, set of reality back in 2021, that it's okay to be my true authentic self. And yes, there will be people that leave, but there's also just as much people or more that will come into your life that'll be even a more positive um, aspect for your life. Mm -hmm. And yes, I did lose quite a bit of familial relationships and a lot of friendships, but just as much or more has come into my life, including mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You and Jack are so amazing and um, everything that you guys do for everyone is just so awe-inspiring. And that helps, <laughs> that helps me, um, you know, continue putting myself out there and, mm -hmm. you know, just reaching for my dreams. Absolutely. Well, and when you reach for your dreams, it inspires people to reach for theirs. Oh, yes, for sure. And so, you know, the the gift that you are and that you give to the world with your music, um, you know, thank you so much for sharing so personally. And uh, it's important. It's important. Um, you know, let's let's shift gears again and go. Let's go back to epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Your experience with epilepsy and the impact that it had on your music. Again, it's both inspiring, but also heartbreaking at the same time. Um, how was your relationship with this right here? How was your relationship <laughs> with the piano and music? How has it evolved since you had that moment, since it came back? Well, um, <laughs> that's also a very good question. <laughs> So from that moment back in 2020, when the pandemic started, um, or after the pandemic started, I, music was just reignited in me. This is probably the closest relationship with any inanimate or um, animate object that I will <laughs> ever have because I love music. Um, music as a language universally speaks volumes and it connects everybody together. Um, I love performing for people, hence why I do these concerts every year, um, is I love to bring everyone together to show everyone how much I love music and how much I love to give it my gift of music back to people. I personally feel that the reason why I was given this gift of music is to give it back to people um, because I am a firm believer that music therapy, because I've gone through it before and given myself years and years worth of music therapy, it resets the mind. Mm -hmm. Like you could be on the verge of having a huge meltdown and I've been there, but I've even been told by my family, if you're this upset, go play music calm your mind and it works every time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it makes me think about, you know, when we were talking about when you lost the ability to play mm -hmm. and music being your therapy is just suddenly taken away from you. Yeah. Um, that now having it back for good. <laughs> yes, never yes. Lose. it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that it's so important. Um, you know, so you've been doing these annual mm -hmm. piano concerts and you have dreams of becoming a professional musician, a professional piano player. Mm -hmm. um, with everything that you have overcome, what does success 
look like to you now? What does that look like? I try not to be too prideful <laughs> about um, my gift of music because I know it could be easily taken away um, with one circumstance or another. But for success, I'd say even just the small steps of success with even doing the local shows, because uh, I would love to do more. Um, but the biggest, you know, parts of success for me is to, you know, be a full-time touring musician, um, showing everyone my passion for music. Um, so how do you, I guess one more, one more question here, mm -hmm. because I think people can get really passionate about something, but mm -hmm. that passion can fade over time. Yes. So <laughs> I guess my question, my last question is this, it's how do you stay motivated and keep reaching for the stars, keep reaching for that success? Because when you try and you try and you try, you don't get there, you don't get there, yeah. you don't get there. How is it that you keep going? Honestly, I have to keep, you know, there's, it's not easy um, at times because working full time in the healthcare industry, it can be mentally draining. Uh, there's nights where um, I have gone home and gone straight to bed and slept for 10 hours easily. Um, but I have to keep, you know, at times reminding myself that this is something that I strive for. And I, you know, there's been times where I've had to force myself to, you know, play. Um, and as soon as I start playing, it's like, oh, what was I thinking? This is something <laughs> I love doing. Um, but yeah, I, I have to say, you know, continuously practicing it mm -hmm. and keeping it ignited mm -hmm. um, in my life, just the passion of music mm -hmm. and the performance aspect of it. Um, that's what helps keep me going. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's interesting that you say that. You just have to keep practicing. Even mm -hmm. when you're good, you continue to practice. It reminds me of yoga, which I just did before I came <laughs> in here and joined you here. Um, it's that they call it a practice for a reason. Yes. Just like with piano, it's a practice of yes. piano, right? Yes. Um, this might be a strange question. Is there a favorite note? If you had one <laughs> note? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a ridiculous question? I don't know. No, not at all. Um, <laughs> There's not like a specific note per se, but there is, I do have a favorite key that mm -hmm. I love to play in and that's in B flat. Um, so B flat, you know, it has seven. Oh, yeah. Can you play it? What's that note? Right. Okay. Um, I think B flat is, just, you know, with the size of my hands, it's more comfortable for mm -hmm. me to play in. Um, a lot of the music that I've learned over the years has been mainly in the key of B flat. Um, so I guess I just really got accustomed to that key. Mm -hmm. um, but I, yeah, I'd say that the key of B flat would be my most comfortable um, and favorite okay. to play in. So B flat, if it was a color, what color would it be? Uh, sapphire blue. It was such a definitive answer. Yes. I was expecting to throw you <laughs> off for a moment. All right, sapphire blue, there you go. That's my favorite color, B too. B-flat, sapphire blue, and the favorite color. Okay, fantastic. Um, what is the... Now, when we first met the other day, mm -hmm. this red piano installation outdoors, <laughs> it was ridiculous, crazy hot. We come, Jack and I come walking downtown, and mm -hmm. we hear this music blocks before we got there. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh my goodness, someone's playing the red piano. Who could this person <laughs> be? We get there. And we find you, that's the first time we met, and you were playing, sweating. Oh yes. Hot, getting burned, but you played and played. And you, how, you said you played three hours? Yes. question here is what is the longest you've ever played like in one sitting oh boy um i'd have to go back on a little log here <laughs> <laughs> i think the longest i've ever played 
was probably six hours. Six hours, my goodness. And I believe it was that night that music was ignited back into me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was discovering like many things that I could do on the piano, like at that point. And I was just so excited. Mm -hmm. And my family, they could visibly see, like some of my family could visibly see this. Mm -hmm. um, because like the passion for music was ignited in me again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do this more. And um, I think at, at one point I forgot to go to the bathroom because <laughs> I just kept playing. And um, yeah, six hours I played just I nonstop. Yes. Yeah. Um... Well, speaking of just the fun and passion <laughs> of piano playing, um, do you know the song Raindrops on Roses? Oh. Just curious. I, this is one of my favorites. I just wanted to know. <laughs> I, it'll take me a second. I've never played it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Did you uh, just say you've never played that before? Yeah, I. You're just going by your. By muscle memory, yeah. Oh I, my gosh. Um. Yeah, my my mom kind of taught me that little trick when I was little. She's like, if you don't know a song, just play it out or finger it out. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how I learned music too. Is I re heavily rely on muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Um because this noggin right here doesn't always remember as much as I'd like. Um, but, you know, I've really been working on um, memorization for uh -huh. music too, uh, because it could be a little tedious when you're sitting there, you know, playing a song, getting in the moment, mm -hmm. um, and then you have to turn a page. And it's like, okay, this is an extra thing that I have to do, because. I'm sure with all of us uh, classical pianists out there, they understand that when you're in the midst of a recital, you're not really supposed to have your music there. You're supposed to have the music memorized, mm -hmm. get all the little kinks out, so that way you can play a perfect performance. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, something that I learned because I was in choir, mm -hmm. um, we learned that you uh, practice like you're going to perform. Mm. No matter if you make the smallest mistake, do not stop and start over. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. And then you can cry about it later. <laughs> that's what, uh, yeah. I mean, but that's, that's, um, it's so smart. It's, it's just like with life. Something doesn't go according. You just keep going. You don't just stop and, and you, you have to keep going. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Joshua, for sharing your story, for sharing your music, for Helping all of us become a bit more aware now. Thank of you. course. Thank you so much for um, reaching out to me. I know it hasn't been easy for us to coordinate. <laughs> Life seldom <laughs> is. It does, never goes according to plan, and that's the one thing you can count on. Oh, so, yes. So um, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Of course. Thank you for talking with me today. I'm mm -hmm. glad that I could tell you my story. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure. Beautiful. Thank you.